Hi, it's Greg Hurrell here with another Vim screencast uh, and I'm going to bend the rules a little bit. I'm not going to talk directly about Vim, I'm going to talk about Zeesh. Um, and the reason is, uh, one thing that I often do is I move from Vim back to the sh shell prompt by backgrounding Vim. Uh, and just to show you what that looks like, just say I'm in Vim, um, if I control Z, uh, I'm now back at the shell but Vim is suspended in the background, um, and that's why Zish up here said suspended. Uh, so I have something in my prompt here to indicate that I have something that's suspended. Uh, the star, the, the yellow star, that's what that means. The, uh, the exclamation point means that the last command exited with a non-zero exit code. Um, so whenever you return from a, like a foregrounded process to the background, you wind up with a a Zish error message, which is why you get the star there. So if, if I run a command that succeeds, like just a straight true, whoops, um, then you see the exclamation point went away, but the, the, the asterisk didn't. Um, now in general, I think prompt power is one of the most compelling features of Zish. Um, so I'm gonna show how this works and a couple of other things that Zish can do. Um, one of the most obvious is that you can have a right side prompt. Um, so you can see here that I've got uh, the name of the git branch oops, over here and I've got these colored dots. Um, red means the same thing that it means in git status. It means that there are un unstaged changes. Uh, blue means that there are untracked files. I mean if I had staged changes I would have green there so just say I would uh, like uh, stage something and quit. Now you'll notice I've got three red dots there. So if the Repo is completely clean with nothing pending. There would be no dots there. Um, so let's just go back to where we were. Um, another nice feature of Zish that I find pretty compelling is this ability to sh foreshadow possible completions of things that you've previously typed. Uh, but I'm not gonna get into that because I'm trying to stick to just prompts. I don't want to, the scope to creep too far in the screencast. Um, so we, we would, we've talked about the right side prompt a little bit. The other thing you can see there on the right side prompt is that I can show the time uh, of how long the last command took to run. So listing is almost instantaneous, takes you know, 0.01 seconds. Um, but if I run a, a process that takes a little longer, so I'll just wait a couple seconds, um, you'll see that that one took 3.85 seconds. Um, this is human friendly. So just say it took multiple minutes, it wouldn't show me hundreds of seconds, it would show me minutes. And if it took hours, it would show me hours instead of you know, thousands of seconds. Uh, so we've got the current directory as well, uh, the full path of it, which I think is pretty useful. So just say I was to go a little bit deeper, like let's go roles.files, templates. Are there anything, no, nothing else in there. Um, you can see that on the left, I've got this nice compact prompt because I don't really want a ragged edge there where the command I'm typing is gonna jump around depending on how long the prompt on the left is. Um, so we only show the last path component in there, but we show the full path component on the right so that if I need the context, I've got the context. Um, but that's taking up a lot of room, right? Uh, so one of the nice things about the right-hand prompt is that it will disappear if the window is too narrow. So if I just hit return there, you'll notice I now only have the left side prompt. Um, but if I go back to a window which is wide enough, then the right side prompt comes back. Uh, so I think we've covered the right side prompt pretty well now. Uh, we've covered the fact that the Left side prompt can indicate when there's an error using this little exclamation mark. Um, the other thing that it can do is show me the user. Um, so when I become root, for example, I get a hash instead of a dollar sign. Um, it can also show me the nesting level of the shell. So just say that I nest a few shells inside each other. You notice that each additional shell gives me a dollar sign, uh, which is nice because there's nothing worse than being nested and then trying to exit and thinking, why am I still here? Um, um, which is also the reason why I want this little background thing in the prompt, because often I'll try to exit and it will tell me you've got suspended jobs, um, which of course is that Vim process that I started earlier. Um, so those are some of the things that a Zish prompt can do. Um, if Even if that was all Zish could do, I would still probably want to use it um, because it does everything that I ever wanted a shell to do, um, everything that I was used to bash doing, plus all these nice little extras. So I'm not gonna go into huge detail about how the prompt works, but I'm just gonna point you to my dot files. 
um, where you can look into this stuff if you're interested. Uh, but in here in the .zhrc, uh, you can see there's code in here for dealing with shell level, uh, which is a variable, um, and some printf trickery here to turn the level, which is a number, into a string of either hash symbols or dollar signs. There is some special casing for tmux because of that common there, which I'm not going to get sidetracked with. Uh, the thing that shows whether or not the uh, shell is in the background uh, appears here where the yellow string does. Um, so I think that's the percent %B, I believe. Um, and then finally the, uh, yeah, percent %B and then this 1J stuff, I think is a thing that shows the, uh, the backgroundedness. Um, this dollars dot dot exclamation is the thing that shows the exclamation mark if the last thing ended with uh, a non-zero exit code. Here's the code for the, um, the right hand prompt, uh, which has all this complicated stuff in it because as I said, um, whoops, that is not what I meant to do. That is also not what I meant to do. Gonna have to edit that one out. Um, I can't remember. I've got a command, a binding setup to refresh the syntax highlighting, which is now balked. But anyway, this is all the human friendly uh, timer logic. Uh, so that's all in there. Um, and what else did I show that I haven't mentioned yet? Um, I think that's really it. So like I said, I, I, I didn't want this to be like a deep dive on Zish. Uh, so this is really just the point of the fact that you can do this stuff and you can do it with only a few lines of shell config. Uh, you can also do, use something like oh my Zish, which I personally have avoided because I don't want to opt into this enormous kind of plugin ecosystem. I would much rather uh, look at the specific pieces of functionality that I implement uh, and learn how to implement them and then just make this kind of minimal config file for it. But if you haven't looked into Zish, I encourage you to. It's pretty rewarding. Uh, for my next screencast after this, though, I'll be getting back to pure Vimland. So uh, if you're interested in that, just subscribe and you will find out when it comes out.